Hello there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Welcome, everybody, to the Must Read Alaska show. I'm your host, John Quick, coming to you live from somewhere in Alaska. I hope everybody is having an awesome day today, and I hope everybody's gearing up to have an awesome weekend. Man, if you missed the last couple of uh, shows, you're going to want to go back and listen to those. Senator Mike Shar was on yesterday. We've had some awesome guests this week as, as well. The mayor of the city of Pelican, which is a small community in Southeast Alaska that has 14 kids K through 12 at the school. And uh, the mayor there has, has done some efforts to entice folks to want to move to Pelican to maybe start a business, which is kind of cool. So but without further ado, I have Pat, the executive director of the Alaska Zoo with us today, which I'm sure families are going to be excited to hear from. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska show, Pat. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, I'm super happy you're here. Um, my family and I went to the Alaska Zoo this last summer with some other family and friends. And man, did we have a blast. It is so cool that we have uh, the Alaska Zoo here in Alaska for folks to take advantage of. Give us a little kind of history lesson on um, how did the Alaska Zoo start in the first place? Kind of give us the 411 on what what made the Alaska Zoo start? Yeah, it's a probably stranger story than any other zoo. The, uh, the Alaska Zoo started with an elephant. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, back in uh, the 60s, a, a paper company had a contest uh, in Alaska to see which uh, store could sell most of their product. And kind of as a joke in their ad for it, it said the grand prize is X amount of money or an elephant. And to their surprise, uh, when they went to pay the guy, he said, no, I think I'll take an elephant. And they said, no, that's just a <laughs> kind of a joke. But uh, I guess there wasn't a disclaimer. So they uh, they found a baby female Asian elephant at a circus in California, I believe, and moved it to Alaska, gave it to the guy. He had it for a while, and then it ended up here in Anchorage as winter was coming on. And of course, you know, what's he going to do with an elephant? So he contacted Sammy Sewell who owned the Diamond H Horse Ranch here on O'Malley Road and asked, she had heated horse stalls. So he asked if he could keep his elephant there. And uh, she agreed to it and she eventually took over ownership of it. And then it was getting too big for the horse stalls. And she and some friends purchased a few acres next to the ranch and started taking in orphaned and injured animals. And uh, so uh, it was, uh, a private nonprofit incorporated in 1968 and it opened its doors in August of 1969. That's awesome. And my guess is you probably, people probably couldn't have a, an a, a elephant in their backyard these days in Anchorage. <laughs> no, that, that would not fly. No way, no how. Um, no, that, that would not happen nowadays. <laughs> and so now you have staff. How big is the Alaska Zoo now acres wise? And how many, you know, approximate, how many animals and those kinds of things do you have there? Yeah, right. Uh, well, the, it's on 23 acres, but just last year, uh, Sammy's daughter was, decided to close down the horse ranch. So we purchased her acreage. So we'll be adding nine more acres uh, to the zoo, uh, you know, beyond the 23 acres. And uh, right now we've got about 45 different species and currently about 95 animals total. Um, there's been a lot of orphaned animals come in this year, uh, babies. And so a lot of those have not been sent out to their permanent homes yet. So uh, the number of animals fluctuates depending on if it's uh, orphaned animal season. And I think I read in the paper this last summer that I know you guys take orphan animals, or at least people think you take orphan animals. You had some kind of 
was it orphan raccoons or something that people just thought was the cutest thing ever? Uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, Grubby the opossum. Opossum, that's what it was, opossum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that uh, stowed away on a uh, uh, shipping container and ended up in Homer and escaped, had babies out in the woods, was captured, and then uh, they, I, they've been trying to catch all the babies down there. Several of them are here now, and Grubby will be staying with us, and then uh, the orphans that we have of uh, opossums will be going to some other facilities. So all, we do take in orphans, but it has to be through fish and game. Uh, we can't go out and pull any animals out of the wild, and somebody can't just drop them off on our doorstep. Uh, for most of the animals in Alaska, uh, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game has to be involved and approve it, unless, of course, it's a marine mammal, and then it would be U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So how did you get involved in the Alaska Zoo? You're the executive director now. Um, what's your story? Well, um, I was looking for work. I had worked for an airline uh, that went out of business many years ago and had a little mechanical experience. Uh, I got hired as a keeper slash maintenance guy in uh, 1986. And uh, a, a position in the zookeeping opened up uh, within a few months. And so I took that. So I've been a, a zookeeper, head zookeeper. I was the curator for 13 years. And I've been, uh, I was the assistant director, acting director, and then I've been executive director since uh, 2006. Nice. My, my guess is you enjoy, you've been there for a while. Yeah, it's a great place to work. Um, it's interesting, never boring. Um, one of the staff the other day said, everybody's there's certain people that just have to get their animal on and uh, get their animal fixed. So uh, being being around wildlife, um, a lot of people here enjoy the you know camaraderie, uh, the working relationships, uh, being around animals, and uh, just kind of the mission of the zoo. You know, uh, taking care of orphaned and injured animals. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. So let's say there's going to be somebody that listens to this who's never been to the zoo, what, what could they expect if they come and visit? Well, we, we moved the last elephant out quite a few years ago. And from that point, we decided it'd be mainly um, uh, Northern climate animals or you know uh, cold weather climate animals. And so the zoo's in a very natural park-like setting. Uh, like I said, it's 23 acres right now and we'll be expanding. Uh, gravel paths kind of wind through the forest, uh, educational and conservation information, um, a safe family-friendly environment. Um, so it's very relaxing. A lot of people find walking the trails at the zoo, um, wandering around, looking at the animals, um, very relaxing and therapeutic. And you have um, uh, polar bears there as well, right? I think I saw polar bears. Was there a tiger there? Yeah. Yes, we've got uh, two polar bears. Uh, Kova is the one that was orphaned late last year in Prudhoe Bay. So it's a young female and she and Cranberry uh, share the habitat. They're not co-habitating yet. They're still getting used to each other. And then we still have one Amur tiger, which is the, the tiger that's from the areas, um, you know, part of Siberia, China, North Korea, um, that's a cold weather cat. And, and we also have snow leopards. That's cool. So, um, you know, could let, let's say there's somebody that also is listening that maybe wants to volunteer. Do you guys allow volunteer opportunities? And what, what does that look like if somebody were to want to volunteer? Yeah, on our website, which is www.alaskazoo.org, um, there's a, a uh, a taskbar for uh, volunteers and you have to fill out an application. So we do have a pretty robust uh, volunteer program and they do things like uh, they attend uh, the petting zoo, letting children in. Uh, they help us tremendously with uh, the different events and fundraisers that we do. They work in education programs, some diet preparation, gardening, uh, help with husbandry, maintenance. 
And then a lot of times when we have orphans, you know, and uh, we're first starting to acclimate them to be able to be viewed by the public, the volunteers will work as observers uh, of the animals and uh, kind of make sure everybody kind of keeps the tone down and acts appropriate um, to let the animals acclimate. And uh, what, what goes on in the winter there? Because I, obviously in the summer, fall, spring, you're probably you know, all hands on deck. It's probably super busy. I know when we were there, there was lots of people there at the zoo, you know, excited to be there. But do you guys stay open in the winter? Is it kind of a shutdown for a little bit? What does that look like? No, we're open all year long. Um, we're closed on Thanksgiving and Christmas days, but otherwise we're open. And our hours kind of fluctuate with the uh, amount of daylight we have. Uh, uh, currently, it's 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. October, it goes 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then November through February, it's 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So the zoo is open. Um, you know, we plow our trails when we get snow, uh, gravel them when they get icy. Uh, we have different things during the winter. In, in October, we have our Zubu, which is our most popular event now <laughs> out of all of our events that we do. And then we have the uh, zoo lights during the holidays where that, and that starts like the day after Thanksgiving where our staff is already putting together lights and starting to set up lights. Um, you know, we have uh, some are uh, uh, sequenced, uh, there's animal silhouettes, decorated trees, arches, and our staff is always coming up with uh, some new ideas for some new lights. Nice. So. They could, they could come in the winter and they could experience some zoo lights, which is always probably a fun thing for the whole family, my guess is. Yeah, that's, that's become very popular. And we even do some corporate things where after the holidays, um, uh, uh, different corporations can do like a, a company winter, you know, rent out the zoo for an evening and have their own private zoo lights. That's cool. So how the heck is this thing funded? My guess is through, you know, private donors or um, foundations and stuff like that. Do you have any fundraisers coming up that you want, that you want to share about? Uh, we don't have any coming up right away. Our, our main one is in the summer and that was called the uh, champions of wildlife. And it was wonderful this year. We have a huge tent set up and some animal uh, uh, presentations and slideshows and uh, catered dinner and it was a great event this year. It was, uh, it did better this year uh, by far than any that we've ever done in the past. But we have some other programs, uh, like like I said, Zubu uh, is coming up uh, at the end of this month. Um, we have a Big Cat Jubilee, which is Saturday, September uh, 16th from noon to four. And you can learn all about the Amur tigers, the snow leopards and the lynx. And then we're also uh, collecting items for the Clear Creek cat, cat rescue. Nice. And my guess is somebody could probably, you know, donate anytime, right? If they love animals, they love the zoo, they what go to your website and they could donate there or stop in in person. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, you can donate anytime. There's an adoption program. You don't get to take the animals home, but you help pay for its care uh, for a year and your name gets recognized. Um, and, and yes, you know, on our website, there's different ways to donate, um, uh, you know, estate planning. Uh, we've got some people that leave some of their estate to the Alaska Zoo to see our work continue. Um, yeah. So what do you think, what's the number one exhibit at the zoo, the thing that people most come to see? I think it's polar bears. You know, they're in Alaska. They, people want to see polar bears. And honestly, um, when Kova is in the pool, in, in the big pool and swimming underwater, I, I mean, I've, I've, I think I've watched uh, polar bears swimming in this habitat for since the late nineties. And if a bear's in the water, uh, swimming in front of the big underwater windows, I got to stop and watch. Yeah. You know, I, I can't tear myself away. Those animals are so amazing and so graceful, but I'd say the pop polar bears are probably one of the main, main yeah, things. The, my family and I sat and watched the, uh, 
polar bears. There's the bench kind of right in front of the polar bear exhibit for folks listening in. And you could just sit there and watch the polar bear do its thing underwater for, you know, 10, 20 minutes. And it was a pretty spectacular sight. So, yeah. um, you know, 20 minutes has gone by in a flash. Do you have any last minute thoughts here before we head out about the zoo? The floor is yours. Uh, yeah, I just uh, people hope people support the zoo. Uh, buying a membership, an annual membership, it is a, it's a great deal. I mean, it pays for itself. If you've got a family with a couple kids, you come to the zoo a couple times and it's paid for itself. And you can come any time of the year you want, you know, have an afternoon that you want to go and get a nice healthy walk in with your kids. A lot of moms bring their strollers and do power walking around the zoo. Our coffee shop is open. Um, it's a great place to walk around, family friendly. You know, you can walk around the winter time and see all the frost on the trees, the animals in their full winter fur, and uh, it's safe, it's relaxing, uh, good trails to walk on. And uh, we just really uh, have worked really hard with relationships with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. and. Uh, we do a lot of uh, research, uh, you know, uh, cooperate in different research programs, but uh, buying a membership for the zoo and supporting, you know, coming to some of our uh, programs is great. Uh, we also have, uh, there's a free lecture series in, uh, that starts up, it's called Wildlife Wednesdays, and it's the second Wednesday of each month, and so the first one is uh, in September. And they are free. They're at 7 p.m. They're in our Gateway Lecture Hall. So we got guest speakers from uh, Fish and Game, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, a lot of interesting animal uh, science lectures. Do you ever get like schools to come out and, uh, you know, whole classrooms to come out and go to the zoo during the school year? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, the last part of the school year, we'll have uh, six to eight bus loads a day. Nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a very popular, and uh, we hope to get something going again this year. COVID kind of slowed things down, but uh, um, we used to work with the uh, uh, Anchorage Golf Course and borrow a bunch of golf carts and do some tours for senior citizens and people oh, with disabilities. Cool. So we're going to try to get that up and going again uh, this next spring. That's awesome. Well, well, Pat, I I. Uh... We wish you nothing but good things here from Must Read Alaska. And folks listening in, go check out the Alaska Zoo. My family and I did this summer. It was pretty awesome. And if you live in Anchorage, go get yourself a membership because, you know, um, if you're bored on a Saturday or a Tuesday afternoon, go go walk it with your kids. And, you know, I, I when my family and I lived in Tacoma, man, we would go to the zoo all the time and, and the kids loved it every single time. So. Um, I'm gonna. I'll put a link to the zoo in the podcast description, so folks can go check it out. And uh, Pat, I want to thank you for joining us here on the Must Read Alaska Show. Until next time, I'm John Quick from somewhere in Alaska. Thanks, Pat. Thank you, John. Have yep. a great day. Bye bye. Yep.